right, so today we're gonna do a little video, a very short video to show you how to duplicate a tubular key. Um, I guess what else do you call it? Um, yeah, most of the time we call it a tubular key. I think there's another name for it slipping my mind right now. But anyway, it's one of these uh, tubular type of keys, okay? And uh, it has cuts on the side, if you notice. The farther it goes in this way, the deeper the cut, see? Some are shallower, some are none almost. And then you have this top notch, which is standard. So here's the blank, right? So I'm gonna duplicate this onto here. So I have a special machine uh, that duplicates these type of keys. Uh, so we're gonna go over there and just duplicate it. I'll show you how the machine works uh, occasionally, maybe once or twice a week we do this. So uh, welcome, come join us. All right, so this right here, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it's HPC Scotsman Tubular Duplicate. Okay, so this machine here will duplicate these type of keys. So what you want to do is, first of all, you need to find the right blank, which this is a 137B standard tubular key. You got to put the blank inside of here, and you put the key you're going to copy on this end. So first things first is I got to get this key in here. So this loosens and tightens like that. So you want to put the key in and set it in place. And you need it to be, if I push this in, see how it moves in? I'm just pushing that in right there. So I need it to be right there. So if you notice, I leave it out. If I just set it in here, I don't have any way to gauge where it's at, right? So I push this to it slowly and it'll put it all the way in and that's exactly where it needs to be. So now it's all the way in, I'm gonna hold that still. And sometimes you might need a, I'm gonna show you here, a, just something to torque on it with, like an Allen wrench. So all I'm gonna do at this point is, I'm gonna double check, push this in. It's touching perfectly, okay. And I'll use like something like this to kind of torque it down or, or tighten it. But it looks like it's pretty tight already. Okay, once it's tight in the spot, so it won't move. Then you take this key here, and literally with the post up, put it just like that. Okay, and then as you, as I turn this, I'm going to take it and go like that, and it's going to duplicate over here. Okay, so let's watch, let's see here. I'm going to do it sideways here so you can see what's going on. Yeah, let me get some glasses here. Oh, this one has a cover. That's right. Cover over. Hold the key there. Start button. So if you look here, this is just going to imitate it, but this uh, cylindrical looking uh, post is going to fit right into the groove. So I'll come here, and right there, okay, it's not touching right now, so i got to reset it. So okay, let's go back, go out, it wasn't touching whenever I do this, oh sorry, that's right, Wait a second, this thing can be kind of tight to get off sometimes. So one thing when I did when I pushed this in, I pushed into, I forgot that I have to do. If you do it right here at the top, right here, you see there's no cut right there. So if I push this in, that's as far as it should be touching at the side. So actually I forgot to do that when I gauged it. So it's good that you see it. So I'm gonna leave that loose right there and I'm gonna push it straight towards just hitting the edge of the key blank here. Not when I was pushing in earlier, it needs to hit the edge of the key blank, which it is, so I leave it loose. Okay, it's hitting the flat side now. Right there, it's hitting the flat side. So right there. Okay, and then you just tighten it down. But you have to make sure it's literally right on the edge, just like the key. If you don't, it will not cut it correctly. Okay, so now, sturdy, level, straight. If I touch it to the edge of the key right here, edge of the key, okay, now back up out and then right here, edge of the key. So when I first did the adjustment, I forgot I was holding it all the way in. That would be the deepest cut, so that doesn't make sense. So you need to gauge it to the flat side of the key. Perfect. All right, it's locked in spot. You need to torque it down. You just put something in here like this and just kind of push down. One more time, flat, flat, good to go. 
cover and let's go. So here we go in here. So if you notice, I turned it to the first cut. Next cut. Rotating each cut. Last cut. There should be seven cuts on this one. Okay, so I'm making sure every one of these is cut good. Good. Okay. One of these cuts look a little weird. Okay. And then now, once you undog it, oh, man. I don't need a better collar one. There we go. So I want to look at this because. Yeah, that should work fine. So if you look closely, there's your cuts on it. So the cuts on these are a little bit different. Let me see if I find my gauge here real quick so I can show you. Uh, there is a gauge for this, which I don't know if it's in this drawer. I will check this one over here too. So basically what it is, is there's a gauge that you can set this on. It tells you what the depth of each one of these cuts are. I don't think I have it right now, but basically you set the key on it and it says, oh, that's a four, that's a five. So the farther in that it goes is the higher the cut. So like that little tiny one's probably like a one or something and a zero maybe has just a nick off of it. So the higher the number of the cut, the farther in that the cut goes. But there you go. That's how you use a HPC uh, tubular duplicator. So these are called either tubular keys or barrel keys. Um, they're usually using Harley Davidson's, cam locks sometimes, boats, things like that. But um, thank you for uh, watching the video. We appreciate the support as always. And stay tuned for more content. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. We're on all the social media platforms. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the like button.